Hi everybody, I'm Lou Lazan Rakenna or Lou Rakenna and here with the second video on Tai Chi and Qigong representing Parkinson's Care and Support UK. Today's theme for this video is warm ups as always and the close down in the same way but I'm going to show you a bit about the um, horse stance which is how we finish which is a great way to help all the systems of the body. Circulation, immune system particularly, very important right now during COVID-19, but also helps you with your standing, your balance, strengthening your legs, and again, allowing the energy to work through your system in the way that it needs to. So much like in video one with the other standing process, I really want you to resist stopping any shaking or trembling in any part of the body. Equally, if your body moves slightly out of balance, just unless you're going to fall or you feel really like you're in danger of falling, then allow your body to adjust itself. And over time, hopefully, slowly and gently, your body will realign even a little bit. So I hope you find that it does make a difference. It's my teacher's go-to in every situation. Helps with improving the tendons, your posture, ligaments, everything. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit more about the energy centers in Tai Chi and Qigong, which I will do now. So much like in yoga, you have different energy centers. They're known as the chakras. Here in Tai Chi, they're known as the Dantians. So the main three are the what we call in Qigong the sky eye, which is the third eye, otherwise known as the third eye, in between the eyebrows. Then you've got a middle Dantian, which is roughly where your sternum is. And your lower Dantian, which you'll hear me mention a lot, if you find your belly button and just place your thumb width on, so thumb width below your navel, that's where your main dantian, your lower dantian is. So if you hear me mention that name or that energy centre, I will um, mention that quite often. That's what I'm referring to because we start from there when we open up for practice and we finish there as well like we did in the other video. So for now we'll start with the warm-ups. I'll do at least three of each. So that you get practice. I may well have to move the video from time to time or the camera to adjust so that you can see my footwork and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So let's go. Let's crack on. So first of all, feet hip width apart, one hand laced in the other and gently working through the waist. So this movement becomes one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I'll just do one more each side and change. Still feet hip width apart, one arm straight up, the other hand on the side of the waist, shift the weight. Now with this one, going into it a little bit more detail, the hand on the side of the waist pushes you over, so you're just shifting the hips with the knees soft, okay, so you're shifting from side to side. Now when that hand pushes that over, the opposite knee will bend the same as the arm, nice and loose. So both arm and leg on the same side of the body, bend over slightly. <clears throat> one more each side. Okay, so next one, feet together. Place your hands, palms up, and then turn them, palms down. Take a breath, come down, one, two, legs straight, come up, bend and stretch. Just come down as far as your body will allow, keeping your legs, your knees straight. Very good for the back, but obviously don't overdo it if your the health of your back isn't too great right now. So with that one, even if you could only come to here and do it slowly, that's really good to lengthen and stretch the spine. So. Feet wide apart, I'll come back so you can see me a little bit better. I'll just adjust the video for you. Okay, so one hand on the other wrist, 
Shift the weight over, one leg bent, one leg straight. And over we go. Good. So again, it doesn't matter how deep you go. I would normally go a bit deeper, but I'm a bit limited for space. But even if you were just here, and that's all you could do, bend one leg straight and the other, just trying to adjust the weight. That's fine. Now the next one, hands in fists and your arms across the front of the body. The arm that's furthest away from you comes up, the other one down in the center of the body, bending one leg, straighten the other. So the arm comes down the straight leg, the other arm is forming a semicircle, so don't reach it too far back. Slight bend in the elbow. Then bring them back to center. Remember to swap them over. Outer arm up, other one down, open and repeat. Again, bring them back to the beginning, up and down, open and down. Don't worry too much, this one does take time. It's just a question of coordination. Here, arm up and down, bend, straighten. And again. So to simplify it, if you can remember that all you're doing with your legs is one leg bent and one leg straight. Okay, and your arms are doing this, up and down, open. Bring them back, up and down, open. And then you incorporate the two together. The arm that's up above your head is in line with the leg that bends. And vice versa. Good. Now bring the back foot in at a 45 degree angle, other foot to this wall. One hand at the base of the spine, the other hand here. Try not to have the hands crossing in front of the body here. Now the main object of this, back foot down on the floor, upper body as upright as you can, bring the weight into the front leg, then turning and repeat. I'll go over the best way to turn after we've done these because that will help your stability and prevent falls and accidents, not just in this practice, but in everyday life, hopefully. I know I've had students where that has been the case. So, now you change, one hand on the other wrist, I place my right hand on the left wrist, bring the weight into the front leg, back leg straight again, and the back foot down, and stretch up and back. So place the weight in the front leg first, bring it forward, then stretch up and back, and then repeat. Alternating sides, and as I mentioned before in the other video, if you can do six each side, that's ideal, or three each side as a bare minimum. So now the upper body, I'll just adjust the camera again so I can come forward a bit more and you can see me more clearly. So feet hip width apart, hands here, now getting the space. Here for two, and open up for two. So palms down, palms up, palms down, palms up. Very good for the heart, lungs, chest, and back, and again. Also, if you're feeling very anxious, very uptight, your breathing's not too great, just go slow and easy, but let those areas expand and open up. Now, circle the arms back and then bring them forward. Now, this is the other one, forward and back. So your feet stay hip width apart. The thing that's moving is your waist and your arms follow. And then you can go back the other way. And relax. So another way of doing that one, a bit more mechanically, is here, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If I turn sideways, that might help you. Turn to the right, left arm forward, right behind. Come to the side of the body with your arms. Turn left, 
Right arm forward, left behind. Bring them both above your head. Turn to the right, left arm forward, right behind. Side of the body. Turn left, right arm forward, left behind. So you do a few that way. Now I start to the left as I change halfway. I turn left, right arm forward, left behind, sides of the body. Turn right, left arm forward, right behind, bring them above your head. Turn left, right arm forward, left behind, sides of the body. Turn right, left arm forward, right behind. So I do them a little bit quicker. That's all that I'm doing. And the movement comes from the waist and the arms follow. Then I've changed halfway and relax. Give it a go over time. Hopefully you'll get it. And be mindful that once you get it one side, it's very, very common to not be able to do it the other side. All that is is a block in the brain, one side to the other. Okay, so then we do the head rolls. So rolling the head now three times in each direction. And back the other way. Good. And let's just bring the shoulders to the ears to gather and release. <sighs> release a deep sigh. Let it all go. Again. <sighs> One more. <sighs> Some days that's all you need. Feet still, hip width apart, bring the arms up, palms facing each other, turn the palms away, ease the arms and shoulders down. Again, breathe in to come up, breathe out to go down. And again, come up, turn and down. One more time. Good. Then rubbing your hands together just to collect some energy and place them just above your knees. And then just gently forward and back, both feet on the floor, the heels on the floor, just stretching forward and back. And then do little circles in one direction for the knees. And then go to the other. And then we're going to do the wrist and ankle again. So placing the weight on the standing leg. Now if you can't lift the other foot here, then just rest the ball of the foot down on the floor, knees bent, and then rotate opposite wrist and ankle one way, and then back the other. Now, if you can lift the foot, flex it as you make a fist with the hand, point as you open. If not, rest the heel as you clench your fist, then on the toes as you open the hand. So it's heel and toe as you close and open, and then shake it out. And then repeat the other side. So either the foot on the floor, change sides or lift the foot. And then heel and toe as you fist and open or lift the foot, whichever is easiest for you and shake it out. If you do want to give it a go to balance on one leg, by all means, place the weight on the standing leg. Just hold the wall perhaps with two fingers while you lift the other one up. Obviously, it's, uh, you'd have to adjust which way round you do it to do the opposite wrist. So you'd have to have your hand on there to do the opposite wrist on the wall. And then here, I would do this foot and hand. Okay, so just rest a couple of fingers to begin with, perhaps then one, and then dare yourself to let go. Because if you always have the hand firmly placed, you might convince yourself that you can't balance and you'll never give it a go. So just start softly and work your way up. Okay, so that's all the warm-ups. Now I did tell you I'd show you the feet to turn, so I'll adjust the camera again. Now a good way to turn well is, let's say my feet are this wide, I shift the weight to one side, lifting the foot by lifting the toes, shift the weight that way. Then I shift the weight back, bring the foot in. So my knees are soft, slightly knock kneed. Shift the weight to the other side, lift the foot, place it down. So I'm shifting the weight back, lifting the opposite foot, 
resting the knees forward nice and soft, shifting the weight back here, lifting the foot and back again. So especially good if you're doing those lunge movements, but also let's say you're walking on rough terrain. It's normal for people to slip and slide, which isn't very stable or doesn't give you the confidence perhaps to hold your stance. So this way is better. Always keep one foot on the floor before you lift the other where possible. Lifting the foot from the toes, then resting them down. And then if you need to bring your feet in, bring them in gently so you don't slide in and end up falling as a consequence. Okay, so I'm going to show you now the opening move of the Tai Chi form. And then I'll show you the horse stance, as I said at the beginning. Again, I might have to show you in, in two ways, perhaps. Let's just adjust this, just to see if I can avoid that to make it easier for you. So, here you would start with your feet together. Take a breath. <laughs> so, it's important, first of all, to actually make sure you're... Your standing posture is as good as it can be. So feet closer together, maybe with a little gap in between, and just rest your knees, make sure they're soft. Your arms are gently away from the sides of the body. Rest them away with a gap under the armpit. Take a nice, easy breath. Now, you're going to place the weight in your right leg. When you look at this, um, video obviously i'm going to be using my left leg so it's going to be the opposite so make sure you start with your left leg so the weight comes from the right leg as you lift the left foot and you just take it a side step about hip width apart from your right foot toes first then heel settle so your weight's even on both sides knees soft now, you raise through the legs, straightening the legs as you come up with the arms. I'll break this down after. Roll the hands back towards you and then sinking the legs gently, coming down with the arms. Breathing in, straighten the legs. The arms are straight out in front of you with a slight bend in the elbows, fingers down. Then you roll the hands as if they're coming back towards you and sink through the lower body and the arms come back. One more time here, and then I'll do it in stages for you, which I would do in class anyway, so this is no different. Let me make an adjustment. So your feet are closer together, weight on the right leg, knee soft. You just come out hip width, toes, heel, center, bend the knee. And then you straighten and follow with the arms. Okay, so I'll do that once again. So knees are soft always and to begin with. Then from the right to the left, toes, heel, centre the weight evenly in both sides, knees bent. Then raise through the lower body, straighten the legs and let the arms follow. Now with the arms on their own, I'll come a little bit closer so you can see more clearly. I'll start again, step, toes, heel, settle, knees bent. Now, as the knees and legs are straightening, the arms are coming up to shoulder height. I roll the hands with the arms still out in front and I come down with the legs, but they stop before the arms come to that dante end. Remember I mentioned a thumb width below the belly button. So they finish there. So I breathe in, come up. Roll the hands, breathe out, sink down. One more time, breathe in, come up. Roll the hands, breathe out, sink down. Now in the Tai Chi 24 short form yang style, which is the style I teach, and it may look very different if you look it up elsewhere, depending on where you've learnt it, who your teacher is, whether they've adapted, made changes, where they learnt it, where it comes from, the lineage, the region in China, wherever, it can be very different. So um, that can be a little bit confusing. But this is how I was taught and how I've remained learning and teaching. So 
you only do this step once. So here, settle, breathe in, breathe out, come down. But if you want to practice this many times from here, this is a wonderful move, the opening form. It's often regarded as float up, sink down. And what that has meant for me is in the Chinese way, perhaps the Eastern way, to be too high, too low, is an imbalance. So you want to find somewhere in between. And that also applies to our emotions, our moods. And if ever there was a time where we might be aware of that more than ever, it's now during the pandemic of COVID-19, where our emotions can be extreme or more extreme and change at any minute, any day. By doing this, because energy is always moving, you come up, you come down, but then you come up again. And that's the flow of life, of energy. Things do come up, but then they must come down. And then guess what? They'll come back up again. So if you're really feeling way down with any particular mood or feeling stuck, which is more often than not a mindset because energy is always moving all around us and within us. This is a really good thing to do for that, just to remind you of the flow and that things will change and are changing. Now, if I do it side on so you can see a bit more clearly, and I'll come closer to the camera for the arms in a minute. I'm coming from the right leg, stepping out with the left, toes, heel, centering the middle, both knees bent. Straight posture. Now, if your body does come back, be aware, or too far forward, just try and straighten yourself up, but that may come with time. Now, my legs lead first, so they straighten first. My arms follow up to shoulder height. Elbows slightly bent, arms shoulder width apart, and my fingers are down. Now, I roll the hands just slightly, so it's like a cupped hand. From here, I start bending the legs, but the legs stop first till the hands come back to that position. So I'm going to repeat that move. It's breathe in to float up, roll the hands gently, breathe out to sink down. And again, breathe in to come up, roll the hands, breathe out to sink down. You see, if you kept bending through the legs, you'll keep going and going and going, and you don't want to do that. Okay, now this also teaches us that we need to use and move the whole body at the same time, upper and lower body. So it's helping that coordination as well as posture every time. Now with the hands, when you're bringing them up, I just turn here, I use one arm, you come up, shoulder height, just roll the hand slightly so it's a cupped hand. You don't want to arch the hand too much because you'll cut off the energy supply there. Equally, you don't want to just let the hand drop here. So you breathe in, come up, roll the hands, breathe out, sink down. So if I did it sideways here, breathe in, come up, roll the hands slightly and breathe out, sink down. So you breathe in, come up. Just roll, breathe out, sink down. Something else to watch for is not to bring the arms back through the shoulders. It's a lot of detail, but we will practice this in another video as well. But this is the opening form. So just to recap, you stand feet closer together, relax every part of the body, knees soft. From the right leg, bring out the left toes, heel, centre the weight, straightening the legs first, coming up with the arms to shoulder height, fingers down, roll the hands there, come down, legs lead and finish first and you come back to that point just below the navel. 
You can practice this, breathe in, breathe out, as many times as you wish. Breathe in, breathe out. You can also do it with your eyes closed, which creates a lovely, calm feeling and helps to relax the shoulders, the wrists, and coordinate upper and lower body. Great. So now we're just going to finish off with a little bit of horse stance, which again, I'll go over another video. There are three levels, but today I'm just going to start you with the high level, okay? Because that's a great place to start. So your feet are wider apart here. For the high level, just a little bit wider perhaps than hip width. Now your feet can come out to the side or forward, however they land really. And all you're going to do is bend the legs with a straight back, hands down like so, as if they're resting on a table. So don't have your shoulders up here, just relax. Now, it is important to keep your eyes open because with this, your body's also releasing excess heat. And if you have your eyes open, or your eyes closed rather, that can make you feel quite peculiar because that the eyes are also like a window, a door where that heat can be released from. So keep your eyes open, look straight ahead, but not focused on anything in particular. Breathe in and out through your nose if you can, and just relax. So once you finish practice, do this for a minute or two minutes maximum. It will help improve all your systems, your circulation, your immune system, the strength in your legs, the health of your bone marrow, and so much more. As I say, if you start shaking or trembling or swaying, just let that settle, just let that be. Keeping your eyes open, looking ahead, your upper body is a bit stiff, ease it out, and just rest here for a minute or two. We'll just do a few more seconds now before we close now. So from the side, you want to have a straight back. So try and resist that to use your back to support you. Just rest here. Your legs will probably feel it if they're not very strong. And slowly ease out of it. And then we're going to close down like we did the last time, which we do every time. So rubbing your hands together, bring the fingertips to the end of the nose, wipe them up the side of the nose, over the eyes, over the head, round the ears, cross them out. Again, nose, eyes, overhead, ears and mouth. One more time, all the way through. And then we just gather and store the chi back down to the lower dantian, to the centre. Gather, palms facing you just at the sky eye point or the third eye as you might know it in between the eyebrows. Breathe in to gather, breathe out, just store back at your center. And one more time. Feet together, well done. So I hope you enjoyed that everybody and I'll be back with you soon to show you a bit more about Tai Chi and Qigong and how it can help you with Parkinson's. Take care of yourselves and see you next time. Bye for now. Bye-bye.